中人啱啱救人，我哋啊。The appointed time, and we have a quorum. I call the meeting to order. Item number one is confirmation of minutes. The minutes of meeting on the 25th of April 2017 has been given to members. So far, the secretariat has not received any proposals for amendments from members. I ask members to confirm these minutes of meeting. Thank you. Item two. Information paper issued since the last meeting. You find、uh, a list on the agenda. Any views? If not, item number three: items for discussion at the next meeting. CB bracket one. One one six five stroke sixteen to seventeen bracket o one and o two. One is a list of outstanding items for discussion. The other one is a list of follow up actions. The next regular meeting was scheduled on the eighteenth of July, a Tuesday in the morning. However, I myself and the deputy chairman have to attend an executive council meeting. I am sorry about that. Well, what if I treat you to Lady M? Well, it's a pay cut in effect, and we have to take up two jobs. I suggest that we change the meeting to seventeenth of July, which is a Monday at eight forty-five. Oh, only two hours. And if you don't ask questions, I can finish the meeting early. The administration proposed four items: one, cost management for capital works projects; two, lifts and escalators ordinance. Commencement notices on in respect of recognised qualifications for registered engineer and registered worker. Item three is revision of fees and charges. In relation to. Um, the relation to manufacturing and storage of dangerous goods under the Civil Engineering Development Department, and the fourth one is a peer improvement program. Ms. Wong, you and the Deputy Chairman are very busy, and now we have、uh, to change our meeting. I hope it won't happen again. It's now changed to、um, quarter to nine o'clock on Monday. So when will the meeting end? Clerk, please. It's、uh, Monday on the seventeenth at eight forty-five. It's a Monday. So will the、um, chairman provide us with breakfast? Yes, it's a matter of whether you want.、Um, if you want a caviar and champagne, that will be difficult. And if you are fine with egg tart,、uh, then I then you can have a choice of um, um, puff pastry or just a normal pastry, a short crust. Puff pastry or short crust. Well, when. We started this term. We did not know that we would be appointed members to be the executive council. And it's unexpected that、um, both the chairman and the deputy chairman are appointed members to the executive council. I ask for your indulgence. If、uh, there are no problems, let's move on to item four: creation and redeployment of directorate posts in the Development Bureau and Planning Department to strengthen support for land use initiatives and district planning work. 
Paper number CB bracket one nine fifty stroke sixteen to seventeen bracket O three. It's the administration's paper. Let's invite the administration to come in to join us. You are already here. We have uh, Mr. Thomas Chan, Deputy Press Secretary of the Development Bureau, and also Jacinta, Ms. Jacinta Wu, the Deputy Director for Planning from the Planning Department. Department. DS, you have something to uh, to say? Yes, I would like to quickly go over the paper. We present the paper to the panel to propose to create one supernumerary post and one permanent directorate post, and redeploy an existing permanent post. Um, to strengthen manpower to the Development Bureau and the Planning Department for land use initiatives and district planning work. We ask to create one AOSGC Administrative Officer Staff Grade C post for five years uh, to take forward work related to comprehensive uh, brownfield site, making optimum use of land and also increasing um, the use of brownfield site is uh, one of our priorities of work. We developed NT West um, through planning for the use of uh, planning for the development of uh, Brownfield site. Previously, we already said that we will formulate a comprehensive development plan for Brownfield site, and we would also um, conduct a comprehensive study of the use of Brownfield, si uh, Brownfield in NT West. The Development Bureau would like to make use of the information on Brownfield to rationalize the use of rural land to provide for operating space for some um, existing operations in the rural area. And we would like to also improve the um, general environment or in the rural area by making good by properly planning the brownfield site use so we would like to have the uh, supernumerary AOSGC um, post for five years responsible for formulation of uh, policies and coordination this uh, post is also responsible for planning for industrial use. This new post is also responsible for planning and strategy of rural area because Brownfield site is is uh, related to the overall use in of a rural land. The second proposal is to create a uh, one permanent chief town planner. In the town planning, in the pla in the planning department, starting from 12, uh, 2012, under the planning department, we created the housing and office land supply section. This uh, section is responsible for uh, reviewing land use and also planning studies for uh, housing and economic development. The work has to the work is ongoing, so we do need a, um, a chief town planner to steer the work of the housing and office land supply section. That's why we apply to uh, turn this uh, post to be a permanent permanent post. We have seen some. Uh, effect of our previous work, but we do notice that there is still an acute demand for land. We think that in the medium and long run, the work of the office will have to continue. Uh, so we do need a permanent post of chief town planner to lead the housing and office land supply section. Our last proposal is to redeploy an existing permanent chief town planner post. To oversee the district planning work for 
Fanling Shengshui and Yunlong East areas. This post is responsible for the work of the new development area and also deal with the regular um, town planning issues. Okay, quite a lot of no, there's uh, quite a lot of uh, development and planning work in new territories, so we need to up, uh, strengthen the uh, office for Fanling, Shangshu and Yunlong East. And this new post will be responsible for uh, Fanling, Shangshu, New Town, uh, Campton South, uh, long and uh, medium and long term housing development, and Fanling, all long housing estate. Uh, the uh, uh, and also the new OZP for Lok Man Chow Loop development. So uh, these three uh, post arrangements. Uh, now we have studied carefully, and we feel that they are of uh, urgent need. Now originally we uh, thought that the meeting could take place till 4:45, but uh, actually we have to end at. 4.30. Now, those who have uh, raised their hands, Leung Chi Cheng, Yip Chi Ming, Wu Chi Wei, Chong Chi Hong, Lo Kun Chong, Yu Si Wing, and any other members who wish to ask questions, Leung Chi Cheng will not ask any question. Chen Cheng Ying, Abraham Shek, four minutes each, okay? Yip Chi Ming. Now, Chairman, uh, there wasn't enough quota next door. May I go over and come back later? Okay, I will take his place. He has to go over next door. Oh, I'm supposed to go over too. You see, Wing? Now, I understand that this is uh, part of a comprehensive effort. It covers uh, brown sites, uh, uh, commercial sites, and uh, new territory sites, uh, the planning thereof. Now, if all three positions could be established, it would resolve the planning issues uh, for the entire territory, I would presume. So how many sites would be covered? Would there still be sites not covered where further positions would have to be established to meet future needs? Thank you, Chairman. Now, the supernumerary post will be for five years, and the planning department permanent post will be responsible for quite comprehensive land planning that includes housing uh, sites, uh, economic sites, and uh, brown sites uh, that will cover industrial and general use sites. and. Uh, in connection with the brown size policies, uh, we also take into account the uh, planning strategy for agricultural land, and the Development Bureau and the Food and Health Bureau uh, will uh, undertake a study for agricultural priority areas and uh, these will also fall within the work of the new colleagues. So I think the coverage is quite comprehensive. As new policies are implemented, we will monitor the workload. We think five years supernumerary post is suitable. Now, I don't know if our company would have certain sites uh, that would be uh, re uh, uh, would be subject to the planning, uh, but I will ask anyway. Now, uh, concerning uh, commercial and industrial sites, uh, now the uh, industrial sites and uh, go-down sites, and uh, these are all commercial sites. 
will they also be covered by the post or will they be covered by somebody else? Uh, the planning department. Uh, now, uh, for the uh, chief town planner, housing and office land supply, uh, he is mainly for. Uh, it will be working on a review of land use to identify sites for housing, com commerce, uh, industrial use, and. Uh, there will also be sites for government and institutional use, and we will. Uh, there will be Sai Street and Mong Kok uh, East uh, Station, uh, the rezoning and the uh, Lam Te uh, Quarry site. Uh, we are undertaking preliminary studies, and they will also look at vacant schools. And the go down sites would also be covered by uh, under the industrial sites review. Now uh, these sites will be released. Uh, would they be for specific uses, uh, such as for hotels, uh, Miss Wu? Now, after we conduct a review of land use, we will identify the suitable uses before we make proposals. For now, for uh, industrial uh, sites review, we do it uh, every five years. That is the review. Now, for dedicated uses such as for hotels and logistics, the Development Bureau will liaise with the relevant bureaus to supply the uses for these special uses. Mr. Yu, do you support the establishment uh, proposals? Yes. Yi Qiming. Now, in paragraph 4, it says that uh, uh, there will be uh, the uh, medium and long term uh, release of uh, brown sites, now brownfield sites. Now, uh, there are economic activities involved, and in paragraph 5, it says that the planning department has appointed consultants uh, for, a, uh, for the study of brownfield sites in the new territories. Now, I thought that was already part of the earlier study, and uh, uh, I would like to participate because I want to ensure that those who are operating in the brownfield sites, if they cannot uh, uh, be resettled in uh, government uh, initiated buildings, uh, what will happen to them? Uh, because uh, there is economic development going on, so there should be uh, uh, arrangement for rehousing before uh, the the the, uh, the uh, dismantling. So now, if they cannot be located uh, uh, in uh, multi-story buildings, then uh, uh, good luck. Now. Uh, now, in Hong Shui Q, uh, 24 hectares will be for uh, the uh, establishments already on, currently on uh, brownfield sites. I fear that may not be enough. So, uh, will you still uh, stick to this policy of uh, uh, resettlement, uh, uh, rehousing, uh, before you uh, dismantle the existing uh, structures? Now, Mr. Yik mentioned that at the Hong Shui Q NDA, we have started uh, two pieces of work. First, to study uh, the uh, Hong Shui Q NDA and in Yulong South, uh, the, uh, how many brownfield sites there are. And uh, when we came to this panel last year to uh, introduce you to the uh, Hong Shui OZP, we touched upon that, and we can supply more data after this meeting. At the same time, same time, we are undertaking a study 
how on how the uh, Hong Shui QNDA uh, can be a test uh, for multi-story buildings uh, in respect of the brownfield sites. We have set aside 24 hectares at Hong Shui QNDA for this purpose. And when we briefed you on the arrangements, we mentioned that if uh, it's not enough, then we will continue to identify other industrial sites elsewhere uh, to resettle uh, the industries uh, thought to be still necessary for Hong Kong, including those um, many of those operating on current brownfield sites. And also in the document, we mentioned that apart from uh, the NDAs, we also hope to uh, learn about the brownfield sites uh, in other parts of Hong Kong, how they are used, so that we can uh, come up with a suitable policy on brownfield sites. Uh, this uh, territory-wide study has begun, and later, little later on, we will have a comprehensive uh, brownfield site policy uh, public engagement exercise uh, when we uh, cons uh, consultation exercise. I noticed that uh, uh, the uh, deputy secretaries uh, said that. Uh, if necessary, he will try to uh, find other uh, resettlement arrangements for other brownfield site operators. So uh, it's not for sure, right? Now, at brownfield sites, there are many types of industries. Uh, there are some uh, 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 logistics sites, some are construction-related, and uh, uh, some are recycling and uh, uh, vehicle uh, recycling and uh, or just for plain storage. And so depending on the use, we will uh, try to accommodate them in multi-story buildings and for construction-related or uh, on the backup sites, uh, uh, if uh, if uh, uh, they cannot be accommodated in multi-story buildings, we will try to find uh, open uh, sites for them. Uh, now we try to provide suitable land for the necessary uh, industrial industries in Hong Kong. Does the uh, Liberal Party support this uh, proposal? Yes. Uh, Wu Chi Now, this supernumerary post uh, is mainly about land development, especially for the uh, in relation to the use of brownfield sites. Now, I want to ask. <coughs> Now, there are several studies going on. Now, these study projects uh, are likely to be completed uh, not earlier than next year. And what specific work objectives are there for this supernumerary post? And what policies uh, fall within his uh, work, the scope of his work, or does he have to wait for the completion of the study on brownfield sites so that the policy is formulated? So at this stage, he will mainly uh, be uh, 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 just to uh, monitor the current developments. Is that the case? And also, in the course of land development, there's another very important area that is uh, now uh, the uh, management of the sites. Now, will he have a role in this area to deal with the management of the lands so that the policy can be enhanced? Thank you for the question. Now, earlier when we briefed members on the proposal to uh, 
uh, to uh, uh, offer compensation for operators uh, in clearance sites. Now uh, we said at, uh, that we would come up with a comprehensive policy on brownfield sites, and we said that we would uh, organize a public engagement in time. And this supernumerary post uh with regard to the uh study for the comprehensive uh, uh work on the uh, brownfield sites uh, uh he would uh, engage in coordination and also the CDD will undertake a study on multi-story buildings the development bureau hopes that the we can uh, uh uh, make good use of the time to formulate the policy at Hong Shui Kiu and Yunlong South and uh, Hu Tong uh, uh, North and uh, Fan Ling. Uh, uh, there, uh, uh, there are brownfield sites outside of these NDAs. Uh, so we uh, uh, need a comprehensive policy to determine how the government is to uh, handle these brownfield sites. Sorry, I would like to interrupt. Is there any chance that we'll be able to get an interim um, study report for those various studies so that we get an idea about the framework of the f policy formulation so we in and in this way we will know whether the uh, function and duties of this post is in is in line with making better use of our land. We're about to start public consultation on Brownfield uh, Brownfield site. We will give further information about our surveys and studies. We would like to also provide more information to, so that it will form the basis of further discussion. As we said that there is going to be a Brownfield survey, we hope to finalize on the definition of Brownfield sites. We'll also take into account the land use needs of various industries. Then we will take into consideration various new development areas to see how we can accommodate um, existing operations. Can you give us the information? We would like to create this uh, supernumerary post uh, to better coordinate our work. We'll be able to give more information um, in the consultation. I think the same questions will be asked in the establishment subcommittee. I hope that uh, you will be, you will ex you will give us the information, um, the latest in the subcommittee. Will the Democratic Party support it? There is still little information for us uh, to decide whether to support or not. There is not going to be a second uh, round. So is the post responsible for enforcement as well? This post is under the Development Bureau. It's responsible for policy directions. So that is in relation to under to um, um enforcement actions under the town planning ordinance but currently uh, town, uh, actual enforcement actions is, is uh, taken up by the planning department dr fernando joe we see that uh, there are going to be a lot of infrastructures and um, major developments the government's trying to grab land as far as possible and make use of um, every site available. So you only look at economic development and commercial development. Well, in basically, you see housing as part of uh, the economy. We haven't seen anything about conservation or um, social consideration. So how can these posts balance it out? when it comes to social services, education, health care, and conservation. 
to make sure that they all play a role. You say in your document uh, something about green belt, short-term land use, and a housing and office land supply section. If we look at uh, the 180 vacant uh, school premises site given by the Education Bureau, I don't know how long they have been left vacant for. Precious land did not go to social services, and we see that uh, there is a very long waiting time for social services. So how can you ensure that these posts will ensure a, a balance? Since uh, there is um, this uh, housing and office land supply section, is there one for social welfare, health care, uh, land use supply section? I'll defer to the deputy director. When we conduct the overall land use review, we will ensure that in every district there will be sufficient social or um, community facilities to meet demand. And we will take into account the requirements under the Hong Kong PSG the standards and planning guidelines to provide sufficient community facilities. When we conduct the, ov the overview of land supply, uh, we will not neglect um, the district need. We will ensure that there is sufficient land to meet district facilities needs. That's exactly why I'm con concerned, because the P Hong Kong PSG has neglected the needs of the district. Um, facilities for the disabled are not included. So when it comes to new developments, we don't see any space allocated or earmarked for that, not even uh, elderly homes. Then that w that's only a basic facility for our elderly. How can I rest assured? You just follow the, the book, but the book's incomplete. There is silence on um, daycare center, homes for uh, PWDs and homes for the elderly. Now there is a new post. It will last for five years, and there are more development and planning work to be done. So my concern is how do you strike a balance? How you can make use of these posts to ensure that district needs are met? Mr. Jung mentioned about district facilities, say health care, social welfare, and education. I can say that um, currently, under the Development Bureau and the Planning Department, um, adopts a, a, pra a, adopts a, a standing practice to communicate to other departments. The Labor and Welfare Department announced an elderly um, service program. So we will review the standards. We'll work with the Labor and Welfare Bureau. We will also follow the uh, most updated um, program of the LWB to provide land. Do you support it then, Dr. Zhang? We, I have reservations because it's going too slowly. Um, they've only just started um, with elderly homes, and there is nothing about a daycare center or uh, homes for PWDs. Mr. Nathan Law. I do agree that uh, when the when the proposal goes to the establishment committee, you should give us information about uh, land policy studies. Some of these studies have been completed, and there is no information available. You said that uh, this 
is a study or a, a study on the um, operation and existing profile of brownfield sites. So I hope that when the proposal goes to these establishments or committee, they'll be able to give us information about direction and also um, information on the studies. And in relation to the central clearinghouse mechanism, I hope that um, a review can be conducted on the central clearinghouse mechanism. This mechanism was criticized for taking too long and is too complicated. So um, will this mechanism be streamlined? Will you promote communication between the community bodies to expedite the process? I want to say something about the, the duties of the uh, chief town planner. You said that um, is response uh, is responsible by identifying uh, land for economic development, but there is nothing about le uh, leisure. Any review about the use of um, leisure and sports sites? Because I see that um, uh, in general. The provision is below the standard required in the Hong Kong PSG. If there is no post dedicated to review this situation, will you add this part to this uh, post of chief town planner? Will you will you reconsider um, the provision of a sports and leisure? Uh, sites to meet the standard. I would like to first answer about the study direction of the Brownfield survey and also some progress of our uh, te technical studies. We will give you an information paper, and I will now defer to the deputy director. The central clearing house mechanism, I think, is referring to vacant school premises. And starting from 2012, we have conducted three reviews. Last year, we had the third review. Every year, at the end of the year, we will conduct a review. I mean. I was talking about the review of the mechanism because um, it's taken too long and for some sites it's been left vacant for over 10 years. In March this year, we have a talk we have announced together with the planning department and the education and the lands department of uh, vacant school premises. And if it can if it is if they are suitable for other uses, you'll find the information. I was asking ab uh, about the review of the mechanism itself. Well, if there are school premises uh, handed over, and if uh, we can identify suitable sites, uh, we will we will um, recommend um, the uh, the school premises. I think uh, the of the officer re refuses to answer my question. If you can't answer, if you can't answer about whether there will be a review, then just say it. You can give me an answer at the uh, establishments of committee stage. What about le site for leisure use? The planning department regularly uh, reviewed the implementation table of uh, sites earmarks for leisure. There is a regular uh, approach. We don't need a dedicated team. Mr. Nathan Law, do you support this proposal? I have reservation. I need more information. Next, Mr. Abram Shek. I thought that um, when CY, when the, the chief executive, Mr. Leung, gave us a report, he already said that he had done a lot of studies and he had found a lot of land. But from this paper, it seems that nothing is done. So it's, it contradicts what the chief executive said. 
given the fact that nothing is done and you ask for the creation of a post. And it seems that uh, that is the only person who is able to uh, come up with the 460,000 units. And in enclosures one and two, is by the sound of it, you only need one person to do all that thing, all those things. And currently, there is no such person who is responsible for that now. If this post is not added, then would the work be at a standstill? The CE said that. Uh, many things would be done to find land. Is it that nobody did the work in the past and we're waiting for this person to do it? The Deputy Secretary? I'd like to clarify that uh, the Chief Town Planner... No, I'm talking about your bureau. Now, that's re uh, responsible for land supply. This is in continuation with uh, of a time limited post, uh, this supernumerary post. Of course, there are w officials uh, dealing with land supply for the territory and the planning thereof. As we said at the beginning, we see that apart from the work that we are already doing for the new development areas, we hear that there is a need to deal more comprehensively with the brownfield sites. And we found that if this is to be done responsibly, uh, the existing officials' uh, workload uh, would be excessive. So the officer looking at the brownfield sites, he is also look, uh, working on the coordination of 20, Hong Kong 2030 plus, and he is uh, also uh, providing support to the Committee on Land Supply. So his workload is very heavy, so we need we to have a new post uh, to uh, take care of the uh, work. Abraham Shek. Now, you described a policy and you said there are official officers working on them. Now, there are three new posts, uh, $4 million per year. It seems that it would resolve all the issues. It seems worth support, supporting. Uh, but you couldn't explain why the current, why currently the work uh, is not, cannot be done adequately. Now, I don't support adding new posts in this way. Now, I remember earlier, uh, a few years ago, uh, when James Tan was here, uh, there was a freezing of posts, and uh, yet the work goes on. And can you explain uh, more satisfactorily? And <clears throat> you said you are undertaking 20, uh, certain studies that will only be completed in the middle of 2018. You don't know how the work is going to turn out, and you are adding posts, uh, $4 million a year. That's a lot of money. But there has to be value for money, you have to explain. Uh, and you have to add a chief town planner. What is, uh, who is done doing the existing work? Now, how much more land is covered? Uh, Dr. Fernando Cheng is right. Your town planning standards uh, hailed from the 1970s. Now, you are, uh, for your 2030 study, you are still referring to the 1970s standards. So there is not enough innovation. Now, uh, if you ask me whether I support this, I have grave reservations, and at the establishment of committee, I will again raise these points. Next, Lao Siu Lai. Now, actually, I very much agree with uh, Fernando Cheung and Abraham Shek. So uh, I have some follow-up questions uh, concerning some community facilities. Uh, now, I see that there is a chief town planner post responsible for coordinating the departments. Now, I think this is very important because, according to my observations, 
the various departments don't really coordinate. Uh, let's look at Tongchong East. Now you uh, expected that would, there would be 850,000 uh, population, and uh, you, uh, land is reserved for new territories, uh, northern New Lantau Island. Uh, but uh, uh, the planning department hasn't done enough uh, planning to accommodate the new population. So would the addition of this post uh, lead to better coordination among departments so that there would be adequate community facilities for the new population? And also, the cooperation among departments is poor. You give land for the uh, uh, housing association to build land. They're supposed to know what community facilities are there, but they, it takes them many years to uh, seek out those organizations, and then there would be decoration and before uh, people can move in. And uh, so it takes many years after the people move in before they can enjoy the facilities. If coordination is better, yeah, and uh, you can do the uh, decoration as people move in uh, in coordination with the various organizations, uh, then it would be much better. Uh, will the coordination be improved with the new posts? Uh, Ms. Wu? We thank the member for her question concerning the chief town planner, uh, the uh, uh, office and uh, housing land supply. Uh, the work is mainly to coordinate the overall land supply and to monitor the timetable for implementation. We hope that at an early stage we could coordinate among the bureaus and departments regarding various community needs. Uh, so that uh, the issues on uh, technical technicalities and uh, planning can be resolved. Uh, the chief town planner will coordinate various government departments and monitor the timetable for implementation. Can you give a clear answer that this new po person will coordinate among the departments so that the new community facilities would be available in time. Now, previously you didn't do any such coordination. Ms. Wu, in the planning stage, the chief town planner will undertake that role. At the implementation stage, the district planning officer will continue to monitor the implementation. No follow-up question. Do you support this going to the establishment committee? I would like to listen to other members first. Leung Chi Cheung. Thank you, Chairman. Now, This uh, D2 post, supernumerary post, now you listed the work that this person is responsible for. I think this is very considerable. I don't think even the deputy secretary can handle that himself. And he has only seven subordinates, and there is uh, a chief town planner also doing the work. Will this take care of the development of 460,000 housing units and also the brownfield sites and other development projects, the studies thereof? Now, even though the studies uh, can come to an end after 2022, yet for such uh, important work, will this post be able to cope? Now, within government departments, are there other officers assist assisting him? Deputy Secretary? We thank the member for his question first. The work mentioned here, including the policies on brownfield sites, uh, the review of current land use and land supply, 
Now all this is uh, under me at present. That is uh, Deputy Secretary One, and this will remain the same after the new post is created. And uh, for this new super supernumerary post, uh, now one of the duties is to formulate the policies uh, on comp uh, brownfield sites. And now we. I uh, used to adopt a team approach, and uh, this new AOG SGC post will take care of the coordination and the relevant bureaus and departments, including the planning department and the CEDD. Now, they already have officers doing this kind of work, and they will provide support. And we have always worked on a team approach. Now, you give him seven subordinates. And the other officials redeployed. Now, you say that we have been doing this uh, all along and you have been in oversight. Now, and yet, for 460,000 housing units, uh, it's a very major issue uh, concerning land supply. And members have uh, expressed their views on the brownfield sites. Uh, now, <coughs> now, you... Now the stakeholders' uh, uh, support is needed. Now it's not easy work, and you have a supernumerary post, and you have a chief town planner. Now uh, I have doubts uh, whether they will be up to the task, even though you say you are overseeing this yourself. Now. Uh, can this uh, work come to fruition successfully within the stipulated time period? Uh, can you provide a written paper on this? Now, will you support this? Now, next, Lao Kuo Fan. Now, the DAB in principle is supportive. Now, frankly, even though the deployments are not yet made. We know that some officers are basically already taking up the work. Uh, now, sometimes when I go to Sha the and when I go to the planning department, I see that uh, 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 notices or, or posters have been put out uh, claiming that there isn't enough uh, manpower and asking for additional manpower. So I understand that uh, there is a very uh, much pressure on the uh, work and because there is so much development going on in Hong Kong. Now taking, uh, let's take uh, brownfield sites. Now people are already working on Hong Shui Kiu and other areas. Now the new super supernumerary post. Now, what difference will he make? Will you achieve the effects uh, desired? And tomorrow, there will be a hearing. Now, will it be these people who will be responsible for uh, initiating the policy? And paragraph 5, uh, says that there will be a uh, uh, housing and office land supply section to review uh, the policy and uh, uh, and the uh, uh, the next round of uh, reviews uh, will begin in the next few y years and similar studies have been done uh, three times in the past. Now, will it be still under the office uh, housing and uh, office land supply section? And uh, uh, will similar proposals be made at the town planning uh, commission? 
Now, concerning the review of uh, industrial sites, in 2015, we completed the last round of review. Usually, we uh, do the review every five years. Uh, preparation work takes time. We will uh, undertake on-site studies, and so, in fact, the preparation work it takes quite a long time, even though the review is once every five years. Now, uh, this chief town planner for this section uh, was established in December 2014. At the time, it was a supernumerary post for five years, and uh, uh, previously this section was uh, also doing the work. This time we propose a permanent chief town planner post to lead this team to take up the work. Review on industrial land use is one of his uh, duties. What about brownfield sites? Just a short reply. If you refer to Annex 5 and Closure 5, that is the proposed job description of the PAS, well, this uh, post is uh, responsible for uh, the formulation of brownfield policy framework and related studies. It also oversees policy on rural land use control, um, policy on the interface issues, policy on economic and industrial land use planning, and also um, the study on agricultural priority areas. They are all related to the use of uh, land on in a new territory. So we, uh, we think that uh, it will create synergy Will the DAB support? Yes, in principle. Next, Mr. Jeremy Tan. Thank you. Well, there are only if just a few days when the new chief executive will take office. In her manifest, she mentioned about uh, development, um, development bureau, and also the transport and housing bureau uh, that will be. A restructure. So, do you see that there is going to be a change in structure, organization structure? We're aware that uh, in the man manifest of the chief executive elect, a major area is land. We have been doing a lot of work on land supply, including. This uh, supernumerary post, who is responsible for formulating overall policy of brownfield site, we are aware that uh, this is men um, use of uh, land is mentioned in the manifesto. Whatever the change in the organization, we need someone who is dedicated to take up this line of work. That's why we made the proposal to create this uh, supernumerary post and to create one post in the plan de planning department to support our work in this regard. Since you say that you uh, pay attention to the manif manif manifesto of the chief executive elect, she mentioned about uh, existing industrial buildings and uh, under um, Duties five. Uh, you you mention about industrial building. However, in enclosure four, uh, the word industrial building has disappeared. I understand that uh, when it comes to industrial buildings, you refer to the wholesale conversion. Policy on industrial building is rather important. How come uh, in this uh, new post uh, this is missing? Thank you. Perhaps I will first clarify. Well, enclosure two is the existing job description of uh, PAS planning and lands two. When it comes to the revitalization, it's uh, talking about the revitalization scheme started in 2012, and in 2016, the industrial building revitalization scheme came to an end. 
so buildings uh, with an industrial use or on in or on industrial zone and uh, with there are new policies it will be uh, the responsibility of PAS 7 uh, who is responsible for uh, policies related to economic and industrial land use and also related studies so there is continuity in short if there is an industrial building policy it will be the PAS 7 to do yes well it has di disappeared from enclosure 2 not just industrial building and it also talked about um, in it also talked about um, uh, pre-vitalization of uh, industrial building just now the depart the deputy director mentioned about the annual study the last one was done in 2015 and it was taken up by the PAS2 in the future it will be under um economic and planning division so it will be under the responsibility of PAS 7 what about the civic party we haven't decided our stance yet next miss uh, dr you dr edward yu well i have conditions before i give you my support i understand that in the past few years when it comes to land issues um a lot more work has been generated. I do think there is a need to uh, for the creation of the post. However, can you give me some supplementary information? Well, for those that are directorate grade, you have to come to us. But what about um, the consequential additions of posts as a result of uh, the creation of this post? I have some questions. PAS2. I suggest that an additional function should be added to coordinate uh, the optimum use of idle government land. And has left out idle government land. I hope that under this post there can be some coordination to make optimum use of idle government land. For PAS 7, but it says uh, oversee um, enforcement under town planning ordinance of rural land use. I hope that there is there will be an addition uh, to enforce the town planning ordinance uh, to s stop the sprawling of illegal of uh, illegal use of brownfield sites there is another important issue that is per pertinent to this panel i hope that is also responsible for formulating uh, rural land use we know that the administration will consider um, formulating the development of rural land. If this post is responsible for rural land use, um, it will be better if uh, there can be a function of uh, formulating rural land use policy. Another one is uh, the chief town, uh, the town planning officer of Shefening Sheng Shuyun Long East. It says here that it will uh, consult a stakeholders. Well, I propose that it should be a bottom-up and direct engagement with stakeholders. We will give you supplementary information in relation to non-directed um, creation of posts. 
Dr. Yu also mentioned about idle government land. We've explained repeatedly that uh, there is a mechanism. If there is land suitable for development, we will conduct studies, rezone, and then um, allocate them t uh, for development. If there is no confirmed use, PAS will uh, review land use and study, and it will be included under the land use study. The duties of PAS 7 is responsible for uh, rural land use control. I use, we use the word control because it's res, uh, because they're responsible for policy as well. Any policy change will be the duty of this post. One of the uh, one of the reasons to create this post is that. Um, when it comes to time planning ordinance, uh, land, uh, rural land use control, um, and many other issues are related to the rural area. For um, the district town planner, I'll defer to the di deputy director. For the chief town planner, Uh, for the district planning officer of Fanling Shengshui Yunlong East, well, yes, they will uh, engage uh, um, stakeholders. So, would you support this? In principle, yes. Next, Mr. Roy Kwong. Mr. Michael Lok. With a tight supply of land, I do believe that um, various and uh, political parties all in support of the development of brownfield sites. Well, we need land for housing and economic development. However, you can't say that you should first use a brownfield site and all the problems will be solved. We do need. Uh, Comprehensive policy. Under what principle will brownfield sites be developed? How do we improve uh, its efficiency? How do we regulate such development? What kind of uh, brownfield sites are suitable for development of housing? There is a tight manpower level in the town in the uh, planning department. So the and the Development Bureau, the creation of um, PAS is is needed. It says that in 2018, the Brownfield survey will be completed. With the creation of this post, can um, the study be completed sooner? Because do we do need land, and uh, we should lose no time. So in 2018, what about well, if it, is it early, middle, or late 2018? We've been waiting for too long. When gov when the departments uh, want land, they will try to get it from the development bureau, but they don't coordinate amongst themselves. In the election uh, electioneering ca campaign, CY. Mrs. Carrie Lam mentioned a number of times about this issue. I remember that um, well, the section is responsible for housing and office land supply. It's also responsible for sports ground, libraries, municipal markets. I hope that with the creation of this post, uh, we will have uh, a street. We will have stable supply of land. So the FTU supports, in principle, the creation of this of these posts. And 
I yes, I thank Mr. Locke for his support. First, whether our work can be expedited. We have already answered this. We would like to start the consultation of the Brownfield study as soon as possible. And we will uh, give you uh, the, the uh, up, an update of uh, all the various studies during consultation. We would like all the different works to uh, go on in tandem. For multiple use of sites, I will defer to the planning department. Uh, Ms. Wu, <coughs> now on the concept, now under the statutory plans, we have suitable flexibilities to allow different land uses on the same site. And when we look at the GIC site, we try to include more than one use uh, so that the land resource can be better utilized. So uh, we hope that the PAS can do better coordination. The Vice Chairman, now the uh, there will be a new officer for the Brownfield site policy. Uh, now it's a complex issue and it involves uh, transport, uh, uh, transport uh, uh, environment, so uh, many, uh, more than one bureaus are involved. Now, uh, why is it that you have a directorate post uh, uh, where, uh, and uh, why is it that different bureaus and departments are involved? W would it be better under one department? Now, concerning Brownfield sites since 2014, in the steering committee on land supply, we have set up an interdepartmental, interbureau, uh, cross-disciplinary uh, uh, brownfield side uh, team, uh, and uh, the uh, different bureaus uh, and the uh, heads of bureaus are sitting on it. Uh, now the proposed PAS seven. Uh, will be responsible also for supporting this uh, team. Uh, so the uh, interdepartment coordination is available. Vice Chairman, now uh, this uh, PAS post uh, will also be responsible for the acing with the various uh, stakeholders. Now uh, he is uh, also uh, uh, in charge of uh, four subordinates. Uh, uh, now uh, uh, will the district's uh, views be conveyed to the officers? And uh, uh, now concerning the PAS 7, now uh, we the proposed uh, uh, establishment, uh, including SEO, EO, and the clerical, uh, is similar uh, f to other sections. Now, concerning the uh, brownfield sites, now uh, the need to liaise with different stakeholders. Now, uh, we expect that when we formulate this policy, we need to undertake this type of work uh, to, and uh, we have to explain to the uh, district uh, uh, parties involved and to explain to the public. Uh, so we need to uh, have uh, such a uh, dedicated team to do this work so that we can uh, focus on the work f on Brownfield sites. Uh, now, concerning the PAS 7 post, I like to ask a question. Now, uh, one of the main duties uh, is uh, now there should be coordination uh, 
so that uh, there would be a discussion with the public. Now, very often there are uh, contention and uh, debates at the district level. So could that be a function for this post? And uh, how are we going to uh, gain public support? And also, the document mentions that the uh, there has been three rounds of review uh, for the uh, uh, for the uh, uh, planning and lands uh, 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 branch and 183. Uh, vacant government premises uh, have been uh, considered, and how many uh, vacant school premises are there that are not yet dealt with? Now, uh, now I want uh, the post to be uh, effective. Now, concerning the third post, can you uh, provide written information on what are the effects of the uh, and achievements of the new post added. Concerning the new post, whether that position would be responsible for interdepartmental coordination uh, so that there would be a broad consultation with the public. As mentioned in paragraph 6 of the document, now, uh, a main reason for this post uh, is that uh, to uh, implement a comprehensive uh, brownfield policy, uh, it involves a lot of uh, coordination within the government. There will be liaison uh, with the community. Uh, so all this work will be covered by the PAS. Now, I mean... In paragraph 16 of the document, now uh, when we review the situation of the vacant school premises, uh, now uh, that is uh, only part of the proposed uh, chief town planner post. Now uh, the uh, monitoring of vacant school premises is ongoing. The Education Bureau uh, reviews the situation every year and then there is a uh, handing over to the central clearing mechanism uh, and uh, uh, the deputy director of planning also said that there is uh, uh, a lot of ongoing work on land review of land use and uh, this is under uh, this section of the planning department so we need to continue with this permanent post and we will provide the written information as requested any follow up no Huang Chun Yu uh, Michael Tian would you draw a line uh, there are three other uh, items for discussion. Uh, I was hoping that we would at least cover two of those. Uh, now, actually, this is already taking up the time for the second item of the agenda. Uh, after we deal with this, uh, then I will attend to that. I have uh, uh, my views on drawing a line. Nevertheless, we have to cover different items of agenda. Uh, I, yes, I said uh, there wouldn't be a second round. We have 47 members. Uh, now, I must allow them to speak. The government has put uh, four items of agenda uh, on, uh, on the agenda. Uh, I also found it difficult. Originally, I wanted to... Uh, to uh, extend the meeting by half an hour, but uh, 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 the the time there wasn't enough time. Now, I, w w Mr. Michael Chen, is you haven't raised your hand. Can you ask that the government doesn't uh, request uh, that, that you ask? Can you request the government not to put I four items on, on the agenda? Will you write to them? Uh, now, 
uh, we must have good planning for the rights of uh, members to speak. Now, earlier, uh, we tried to meet with the planning department on the 183 vacant school premises for the new post. Now, uh, this issue is very much related to land use. Uh, the meeting that we had, uh, uh, now uh, we tried to find uh, whether, whether there are vacant school premises, at least one or two of them that can be used to house uh, uh, artists uh, who have difficulty finding premises. And uh, uh, so this would be helpful to develop uh, our uh, uh, artistic uh, talents. Now, uh, we need support by policy bureaus. Otherwise, it's rather difficult to move forward the policy. Now, for these new posts, uh, they do coordination work. Now, these uh, vacant school premises, now, uh, will the government try to coordinate so that uh, uh, artists uh, can begin to use these premises? Uh, Ms. Wu? Concerning vacant school premises, in May this year, we announced a list of what we have uh, reviewed and uh, uh, those that can be available for alternative long-term uses. Now, if uh, NGOs uh, and uh, community groups want to make use of these premises, uh, you can look at the list. They are uh, under uh, either lens department or uh, uh, GPA or uh, under uh, private ownership, so uh, the uh, they can uh, liaise with the planning department for the information. Now we understand that uh, you have uh, short, medium, and long term uh, objectives uh, for these uh, school premises. Now. Will you adopt the new thinking of uh, making at least one or two of these premises available for the use that I mentioned? Can you talk to the department's concern? Now, the planning department has no way to move ahead in this regard. Now, so I am offering a proposal now for these uh, uh, permanent posts, now will the uh, vacant school premises uh, uh, work be under the uh, permanent post? Now if uh, uh, community groups or uh, NGOs want to make use of these vacant school premises, actually they have been coming to us with these proposals and we have a mechanism uh, where we conduct a central review to see whether there are suitable sites or school premises that can be used for those purposes. Now, if these groups uh, obtain policy support, uh, we, have, uh, we shall identify suitable sites to meet their needs and we will uh, take into account whether they are vacant school premises for those purposes. Now, all the members have uh, spoken. We will come to the end of this item of agenda. And now, the administration should know by now that uh, uh, certain members are, have reservations. Uh, no one has objected. Uh, next, uh, item number five, uh, to amend the building ordinance. Please don't stand up uh, because it affects me uh, as chairman. Now, to propose amendments to uh, building's ordinance, CAP 123. Now, uh, we, the, our co colleagues can see that you've raised your hands. For strengthening enforcement and action against the illegal domestic use in the industrial buildings, LC paper number CB 11656-17, bracket 03. 
now, uh, and there's a document o, uh, 04 for uh, 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 background uh, information. Now, uh, we invite the officials to come in. Now, looking at the time available, I believe item number 7 on Hong Shui Q will not uh, be discussed for lack of time, so the officials do not have to wait. Uh, now, we will try to cover uh, item number 6. I hope that officials can, uh, I hope that members can cooperate. Now, eight members have raised their hands. Uh, four minutes each, uh, that will take us to 4.15. Now, do we need to speak for four minutes or would three minutes be adequate? Four minutes. Okay, in that case, I will not cover the Kowloon East item. Uh, so we will use the remaining time for this item. Now, uh, the deputy. Uh, so, would the officials for the uh, Kowloon East uh, environmentally friendly linkage system uh, come here on another occasion, please? Now, I see that members are uh, very uh, enthusiastic. Now. Uh, uh, Michael Tian, Oh Chang Sing, Fernando Chung, you, uh, Edward Yu, Helena Wong, uh, Kwang Chun Yu is not here. No. You cannot raise hands for him. If he is here, he can raise his hand. You, you cannot uh, do that for, for him. I'm on hold. Jeremy Tan, Alvin Young, well. Mr. Young goes before Mr. Tam, Lung Chi Chung. There are 13 members, so we won't be able to finish it with four minutes each. So I will have to stop members once they reach the four minute limit. At half past four, uh, another meeting will take place here. I am not even going to introduce members. Well, can you maybe give us a very short presentation to present the paper? Yes, it'll be a short one. Well, under the current buildings ordinance and also current enforcement um, policies of the buildings department, Industrial buildings do not allow domestic use, and in 2012, we have mounted a number of major operations to um, f to um, phase out illegal domestic use in industrial buildings. However, um, current legislation only targets uh, illegal domestic use in industrial buildings in general. In the past, we have um, faced we have tackled uh, uh, a lot of illegal domestic use. There is very little deterrent effect. So we propose uh, to introduce criminal sanctions on um, use of uh, industrial buildings or knowingly allow other persons to use these premises for illegal domestic purpose and also uh, those who aid and are best owners in allowing another person to use these premises for illegal domestic use. We will also empower the building's authority with investiga investigatory powers and also to empower them to, ap to apply for court warrant to effect entry. The ob objective of our proposal is to enable the buildings department to take away fire safety risk in industrial buildings. And if owners will plan to uh, turn the industrial unit into domestic use, we hope to pose a higher deterrent effect. We have explicit provision to exempt um, occupants uh, who are already using the premises before the law comes into effect. Mr. Michael Tian. Well, 
if you stop people from leasing industrial buildings to grassroots uh, for use as domestic premises, that means that you have taken away um, their accommodation. A lot of people who cho who live in industrial buildings because they can't afford flats in other uh, types of buildings. You will put in place uh, some interim measures to allow them to stay in interim housing. But what about in three months' time? Will you allow them to stay in interim housing till they get PRX unit? Well, many years ago, uh, there are about 8,000 uh, unit households in Potin Transit Center. Currently, there are about 3,000. Most people who live in the subdivided flats cannot afford uh, to rent in a private housing. That's why they have to live in subdivided flats or sleep in the streets. It's right for you to take enforcement action, but you can't ignore um, the needs of the grassroots. So I ask um, the government uh, to identify suitable industrial buildings and turn them into uh, domestic use to increase residential housing supply in urban area. I fully subscribe to the administration saying that uh, there are some um, safety risks, but there are many different types of industrial buildings, so the level of safety risk should be different. Well, you should maybe set down to some uh, s size and criteria and implement rent control. And you should also take the lead in starting um, discussion. You need to put in place measures so that people who live in industrial buildings will not be scared. Some people approach me because uh, they are scared that uh, once there is criminal sanction, then they won't, the owners will not rent out these flats and they will have nowhere to live. And I have submitted a motion as well in relation to my two requests. Mr. Michael Tian, please don't say anything that is not related to this item. Deputy Secretary, under the current policy framework, well, domestic use in industrial buildings is not allowed. In the past, the Buildings Department has surmounted a number of enforcement actions. When such actions are taken, there will be supporting measures in place. The Buildings Department um, has their own social worker team. So they will um, provide so support using their in-house social services team. And under the current policy, yes, I have limited time. Can you rezone more industrial buildings and turn them into residential units, uh, residential buildings? Perhaps uh, you will give a written reply next, Mr. Lam Chuk Ting. The problem of uh, housing in Hong Kong has gone to such a critical stage that it brings shame to Hong Kong. A lot of people uh, can't even afford subdivided flats. They are forced to move to premises that are for industrial use in the first place. They have nowhere to turn to. If you criminalize letting uh, industrial buildings in this way, of course I can understand it from the perspective of uh, ensuring public safety. You do need to put in place um, house supporting measures. Of course, for the residents, if they have a choice they would not choose to live here. It's just that they can't even afford to live in subdivided flats in residential buildings. 
people now go to um, rent in resident in industrial building if these are if the accommodation is taken away from them where are they supposed to go apart from living in a cage home I would like to ask the administration do you have uh, the figure of uh, people who are currently living in domestic premises in industrial buildings Well, we don't have any proper figure. What about an estimate? Well, we tried to get the information. We found that uh, most of the industrial buildings are not lived in. And for those uh, that with people living in them, they don't reply to us. Uh, under current legislation, well, um, illegal domestic use in industrial buildings is against the law anyway, so you don't have a figure. A lot of um, bodies estimate that tens of thousands of people currently live in subdivided flats in industrial buildings. Once it's criminalized, these tens of thousands of people will be homeless. Where do they go? You say they can go to transit housing and then interim housing. But for a lot of people, for various reasons, say their jobs, their children's their schooling, or uh, or other reasons, they can't stay there. So without supporting measure, where do they? Where are they supposed to live? Well, what about uh, following the approach of squatter houses? Um, use a registration system. House these people instead of let letting leaving them to their own devices. They may end up sleeping in the street. Domestic use in industrial buildings is illegal now. It's difficult for us to confirm how many people are living in these premises. It's difficult uh, for our enforcement officers uh, to uh, just um, use site inspection to identify illegal use. There are quite a number of industrial buildings in Hong Kong. It's uh, operationally speaking very difficult for us to conduct such a survey. Well, at the time when there was registration of squatter houses, squatter houses themselves were illegal. And we're talking about hundreds of thousands of squatter houses, and it could be done. Mr. Edward Lau, I want to ask when you implement this policy. Look at these um, flats. Do you know what they are? You may not know. These are plans approved by the buildings department in industrial buildings. These are round the clock studios, work studios. Well, if, if you surf on the internet, you'll find a lot of these. And there's uh, one in Light Chicock. And uh, point number seven means uh, you can uh, you can acquire your own home with ease. And nine, what is it? The BD approved plans. These are all industrial buildings. How come the BD will approve plans that no diff that are no different from a residential building? When I go in, I don't see in any way it can be put to industrial use. There are glass doors, glass um, panels, glass partitions. You won't dare even push a trolley around. You give the impression that uh, one owners can buy it and then rent it out to be used as subdivided flats or just for accommodation. You now want to tighten your grip. At the same time, the BD has approved a lot of plans in industrial buildings like this. You have 
made mistakes. And we know that there is an acute demand for housing. Is it the responsibility of the BD for approving such plans? And would you conduct um, would you conduct a review of the situation to to make sure that industrial buildings are used for industrial use? And would you explore the possibility that um, when it's safe, you can um, change the land use in industrial buildings into residential use when Housing supply has stabilized, and then you then you tighten your grip so that these people can um, find accommodation in the in the private sector properly. So, is it the responsibility of the BD? If you can approve plans like that, so would you explore the possibility of um, uh, changing the land use when it's safe? There are new measures adopted in relation to approval of plans. Now, in June 2016, we started to vet uh, the uh, standards for industrial buildings. Now, and we tighten up. Now, if there are toilets in the in declared industrial buildings, now uh, they must use natural light. Uh, because usually there is a natural light. Now, in these new industrial buildings, we wouldn't approve them, and the ducts uh, for the for the for the pipelines. Uh, now, uh, the uh, if there are toilets, then these uh, internal uh, pipeline passages would have to be included in the areas. Now, and if there are uh, tall uh, ceilings, uh, Chairman, uh, will he, he continue to speak? Perhaps uh, the director would supply a written submission. Helena Wong, uh, Lao Siu Lai, Lao Kun Chong, O Chong Sing. Thank you, Chairman. Now, the Development Bureau makes this proposal, and I think it's uh, absurd. Now, we understand the safety factor, but looking at the housing policy, the grassroots are unable to afford the rentals in the market. Now, I like to allow time for the officials to respond first before I have follow-up questions. Uh, the Deputy Secretary, I think Mr. Orr is asking whether we have measures to house these people. Yes. Now, all along, our, under our law enforcement policy, the Buildings Department has measures to deal with the affected tenants uh, after law enforcement is carried out. For those who face housing needs and uh, require temporary housing, now after the situation is checked, they can move into a transit center. Now, if they have stayed in the transit center a period of time and they meet the test by the Housing Department on homelessness, they can move into interim housing. And I'd like to take this opportunity to answer the questions by members earlier on, on whether there would be a refitting of industrial buildings as interim housing. We considered this several years ago. Now, under existing legislation, now, uh, for industrial buildings, they must meet with the deeds and the uh, buildings department uh, regulations and so on. Now, for domestic use, uh, 
there has to be natural lighting, ventilation, fire safety requirements, etc. Now, if the entire industrial building is to be remodeled for uh, temporary housing use, they still have to meet the requirements. These requirements are for the sake of safety of the residents, so we feel that for such remodeling, it would be very difficult. Now, if members have uh, individual uh, proposals regarding individual cases, we can consider them. Next. Dr. Fernando Chang. Thank you, Chairman. Now, the government is to amend legislation so that the Buildings Department can enforce the law on uh, removing uh, illegal units, domestic units in industrial buildings. Now, uh, after the law comes into effect for the buildings department to enforce the law, uh, how many households uh, would you uh, clear every year? Now, you said uh, 84 such premises have been removed since 2014, and only 12 persons in the end moved into the uh, housing uh, temporary housing. Now, this is uh, quite shocking. Now, these tenants, uh, as the member said, have no other choice. Who would prefer to live in industrial buildings? They were not for residential purposes. There might be risks. Uh, they, might, they might not be suitable for domestic use. Yet the government uh, has been deficient in housing and land policies. Maybe you adopted a high land policy and you con high land price policy and you consider yourself successful because prices have gone up. So these people have, can only choose to live in industrial buildings. Now you are going to amend the law. You said that you would re eradicate such units uh, for the sake of safety. Now, uh, no one is against improving the safety of industrial buildings, but you must find a way to resolve the housing issue. Now, these low-income residents, they have no other alternative. How do you resettle them? Now, you said that the, you offered them the transit centers. Now, only 12 of them went there because temporary these temporary centers are uh, in very poor state. They uh, have uh, double-deck bunk beds, uh, they are uh, fleas, and uh, they are in potent. And if someone works in the urban area, they cannot uh, go to work. So you are forcing them to move to other industrial buildings and subdivided units. That's not resolving the issue. So what remedial measures have you considered? Are you going to increase interim housing by large quantity in the urban areas? Otherwise, you would continue to uh, make things difficult for the low-income earners. Now, actually, we haven't changed the policy of uh, not allowing domestic use in industrial buildings. Now, the Buildings Department has uh, been enforcing the law. After the new legislation comes into effect, the law enforcement action will continue. The objective of the new legislation is to deter uh, owners from providing the premises to tenants because under the existing legal framework, there's little deterrence to these owners. And under the existing framework, if the owner, next uh, Edward Yu, first I'd like to express the view that 
for people to live in industrial premises, the fire risk is very high. And if people have to tolerate that, when there's a fire leading to mortality, uh, the risk would be too high. So from the perspective of fire safety, we must agree with the proposed legislation. Now, the officials here today are not responsible. There are many ways. Now, you can rezone the entire industrial area as uh, residential, and that may be more effective. <clears throat> and yet, concerning the proposed legislation, I have a technical question. Why is it that the administration introduces the element that not just the owner but also the tenants would also be subject to criminal action? Well, they are tenants. Now, you said that if these are low-income families, you would exempt them, but this would be uh, difficult to uh, state in your legal provisions. The Deputy Secretary, now this is a good question. At this stage, concerning the detailed provisions, we are still seeking the views of D of J. And regarding the principle, why is it that we want to include the tenants besides owners because we have seen that uh, 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 with all the enforcement action by the building department over the years, it can be seen that there are middlemen uh, who uh, leased a large part of the industrial building and then they sublet those areas. We want to include these people uh, so that they have to bear criminal, criminal liability. Now, if people merely live in these domestic units, uh, these are uh, industrial uh, buildings, uh, but they uh, don't sublet to others, they are merely low-income earners who have difficulty living elsewhere, then we stipulate that if they merely live in the industrial buildings and they do not make profits or sublet uh, from or make uh, uh, sublet these uh, units, then they are free from criminal liability. Uh, how about high-income earners? Now, now, we are still working on the legislation. Now, we will uh, not uh, use income as a criterion. We rather uh, look at the role or uh, uh, the role of the person. If he merely lives there as a tenant, uh, he can uh, be free from uh, criminal responsibility. If he sublets the premises, then he may be seeking profits, and so the, he might be criminally liable. <coughs> Next, I learn Chi Cheng. I am very much concerned also about this proposed leg uh, amendment to legislation. I met uh, a group of residents of Ngachun where the government has resumed some land. Uh, they, uh, there are many subdivided units in that location too. Now. Uh, so this is uh, similar to the industrial building situation. Now, this, these people wouldn't live in the new territories. The owner is aware. The uh, uh, the uh, sub-owner is also aware. Now, the, the tenant who, uh, who leases to the uh, actual residents uh, is aware of that. Now, under this proposed legislation, uh, the owner is uh, targeted 
and then the uh, subtenant who sublets is also uh, liable. Now, will you also have other sanctions? Uh, because legislation takes time. Now, in the case of Nga Chun, the government resumed the land, so there's no land. So it's government land. The government can do whatever it wants. So in this case, will you adopt this course? You uh, first uh, 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 levy a, a, a charge on the property, uh, and then you resume the property. Now, <coughs> now the legal uh, the action, uh, law enforcement action by the buildings department is not perfect, and yet uh, the behavior is against the law. So the buildings department has uh, undertaken taken large-scale operations, and many of these units uh, have been uh, eradicated. What we're concerned with was that there was an insufficient deterrent effect. That's why we would like to strengthen it. Mr. Leung mentioned about entering encumbrance, an encumbrance or um, seizure. That is a different purview under the development bureaus, um, say, say, for example, land lease. If you want to penalize someone, of course, criminal sanction, a criminal sanction will pose a deterrence effect. But isn't it a, a heavy penalty if the uh, premises is seized? We will issue clearance note order. And all these orders are entered into um, the records of the Lens Department. Uh, in common terms, it's uh, entering an encumbrance. I see that in the publicity of sale of flats, uh, just, just like the one shown by Mr. Edward Lau, saying that uh, there are lots of nice industrial building premises uh, being sold, and they can uh, easily compete with residential units. Uh, you said that uh, you have done some work to eradicate them. How come uh, there are about 7,000 households living in the subdivided flats in industrial buildings? Mr. Alvin Yao. Thank you. The paper says that um, the administration admits that they don't have sufficient manpower to conduct uh, multiple ins inspections. If they don't have sufficient manpower, that's what they have admitted. Will there be manpower uh, increase to the buildings department uh, when uh, when the proposal is put in place? First of all, I'd like to explain about what is uh, said in in the paper about multiple visits. Under the building's ordinance, the building's department is empowered to conduct investigation, but that doesn't target uh, illegal domestic use, but uh, I but improper use. And this time, we would like it explicitly expressed that that um, well, um, the buildings department will have to uh, prove that they could not gain entry before applying for a court warrant, and they will have to notify the uh, person involved. Well, elite, uh, domestic use in industrial buildings is unique, and it can be changed very quickly. Very often, we need blitz uh, inspections to identify breaches. Under the current legislation, it's not easy for the BD to 
to conduct split action. That's why we make the proposal to target the unique characteristics of domestic use to give new power to the BD. I would defer to the director of, uh, for for enforcement power. We'll take into um, the situation and follow the procedure to apply for addition of manpower. I have a question to ask the director. At this moment, is there sufficient manpower to handle the additional work if the, if your proposal is accepted? There are over 1,900 industrial buildings. Um, will you have insufficient manpower to take enforcement action? Can it be outsourced? Well, every year we will target a number of buildings to mount a major, to mount a large scale operation. With the with the, with the new investigation power, our action will take a shorter time. That means with the same amount of manpower, we can cover more industrial buildings. I would like to ask about storage of dangerous goods. It's been four years since the department has taken action. Do they have uh, information about how many buildings store dangerous goods, how many um, of them have been covered by the investigations, and how many of them have been confirmed to to have um, dangerous goods stored. We don't. I don't have the information off the top of my head. Mr. Jeremy Tam is here. I'll ask um, Frankie Yik to speak, and then we'll end the meeting. Please calm down. This item will be the first item in the July meeting. Well, some members have left their seat, and uh, it's my practice to put them at the end of the queue. Um, I'll now read out the names. Frankie Yik, Leung Kwok Hong, Alice Mack, Ray Chen, Eddie Chu, Roy Kwong, Wu Chi Wai, Abram Shek, El Helena Wong, Lau Siu Lai, Nathan Law, Jeremy Tam. That will be the order. This will be the first topic um, in the July meeting, the 17th of July, 8.45. There will be a pineapple bun, there will be a cocktail bun, there will be uh, egg tarts. Ray Chan, I hope that uh, the administration will not so unrealistically add so many items. Do you think that 15 minutes will uh, be enough for all the items? I thought I had uh, half an hour. I'm going to be the chairman for one more month. My job is to remind the administration that we have over 40 members. We may not have enough time, but I will not stop them from adding to the uh, discussion items. Well, uh, we will go. We will just proceed, and uh, whatever is left will be carried. Will be um, carried forward to the next meeting. Mr. Abram Shek, I hope that the next time when you ask uh, civil servants to answer, it's uh, unfair. I hope that the CS will come to answer because it's not just the buildings department. It uh, involves uh, the housing department as well. I need four minutes for uh, Mr. Frankie Yick. Mr. Yik, four minutes. The Civil Party, uh, the Liberal Party, is concerned about um, people who uh, who will be affected uh, where, with the pro under the proposal. I want to ask. Paragraph five says that at the end of 2016, the BD had inspected 118 industrial buildings and. Um, And, and issued 232 statutory orders, 192 of them discharged, and 30 uh, being um, instigated. That means about uh, 40 orders have not been complied with. These are 30 prosecutions. 
Uh, does it cover the faulty non-compliance? Asset may, as in may. Twenty-three have complied. One with the initiated prosecution. The outstanding sixteen, we are uh, proceed. We uh, have. We are proceeding with um, prosecutions. Sixteen of them. Yes. My second question is under two A. You said that. Um, well, the law will be amended to impose criminal sanction on a who use or knowingly allow other person to use. If the owner said, "I didn't know," so does the owner have to be legally responsible? Well. When it comes to allowing other people to use, yes, there is the element of knowing, but it depends on um, the prima facie case. Sometimes a lot of people will engage an agent to deal with things like that. But um, it can be a defense that, well, I don't know because uh, the, ag the agent handles everything for me. And the agent might say, well, I have uh, notified um, the owner about everything. This is a loophole. Well, in the example cited by Mr. Yick, if the BD has evidence showing that there is illegal domestic use in the premises in question, related parties will have to be notified. That means they know. And if they don't take any action, then they will be liable under our proposal. So if it's rectified, then they are not criminally liable. Is that right? I don't agree with that. Well, I can't really deal with um, hypothetical questions. We will have to look at the individual cases to see if uh, the owner has taken reasonable steps to s prevent it from happening. And from common law cases, we see that if the owner had um, the the unit uh, dec decorated as if it's a residential use, and if uh, the owner uh, did not stop the residents from using it, then it then they may be criminally liable. Of course, it involves uh, evidence collection. We try to strike a balance. We don't want the other extreme. Some owners really don't know at all that uh, the premises are used for residential purpose. Well, I, I don't want people to criticize me for allowing uh, 10 seconds or so for the Liberal Party. But as you have heard that uh, this un this question should be answered by the CS4A, the, the Chief Secretary for Administration. Perhaps you will ask the CS4A whether he will appear in the next meeting. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.